my mother. Amen. I my mother. Amen. Our founding mother of this great church. Amen. And to the first lady. Amen. My own wife. Amen. Lady Dora and Rogers. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. First Administrator Deacon Jackson. Amen. Did he not pray? My God, he opened up the doors of the church this morning, this evening. Amen. And allowed the Spirit of the Lord to come in as it is. God bless you to all the all of you all that make up. Amen. This setting on today. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Pastor McFadden. Amen. God bless you, Lady McFadden. Y'all just really sitting and look too far back for me. I'm sorry. Amen. You're a state leader. Amen. Sister McFadden, Pastor McFadden, one of the leading preaching pastors in this jurisdiction. Amen. You're really sitting and looking too far back. Amen. But I'm, I'm going to honor your request. Amen. I'm going to honor your request. Amen. But I want to let you know we love you, we see you, and we recognize. Come on, Brady New Bible. We just thank God. Amen. For Pastor and First Lady McFadden. Amen, amen. You all know we, we love you a little bit better than that. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody it's word time. It's word time. Thank God, amen, my own superintendent. Amen. And step in over here. Come on, let's thank God, amen, for the superintendent of the greatest district. I got to say that, brother Terry. <laughs> Come on, Greater New Bible Way. That's your hour, Superintendent. Amen. Some love on today. Amen. Didn't know that he would be here. Amen. He snuck in on us and where we're glad on today. We thank God for him being with us as well. Amen. But it's time. It's time. Amen. For the Word of God. It's time for the Word of God. After much prayer, amen, and talking with my brother, he shared with me, Brother Rogers, this is what we're able to do. This is what God has given unto us. He said he got it from somewhere. And he shared this is how we've been able to be a blessing to God's house and God's ministry. And not only that, for that, God's people have been blessed, those that adhere to the word of God. And when he began to share with me in such an anointed way, amen, I started thinking on that thing. As a matter of fact, it woke me up in my sleep. Just being honest with you. I said, you know what? That sounds like a great idea for the Greater New Bible Way Church family. Yes, sir. Amen. And some three years ago, we've taken that baton and ran on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This great man of God is getting ready to come, amen. He is the proud pastor of the New Jerusalem, amen, Church of God in Christ there in Long Island. Amen. He's been pastoring for a number of years, and I believe this is his third assignment, second assignment, third assignment, third assignment, amen. And he said he can go from he go to heaven from there. He said he can go to heaven from there to New Jerusalem. So y'all don't plan, y'all don't have to worry. He's in love with you. He's in love with you. Come on, let's thank God for Amen for New Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Amen.
standing before your people which is the greatest people in the world we ask God that you would anoint these own lips of clay hide us behind your cross crucify self and only let you dwell through us God even as I pray today I ask that you look on the greater new Bible way church family I ask that you would continue to look even on New Jerusalem, Holy Temple. God, continue to strengthen the saints everywhere. God, we love you, we magnify you, we praise your name. For we know that all things is possible if we disbelieve. And God touches on today, even the pastor of this house, his wife, give them strength as they carry out the assignment that you have called them to do for such a day in time as this. We love you, God, we magnify you, we give you praise. In your master, the Son, we pray, thank God. Amen. While you remain standing, let's travel to 2 Timothy. I want to go to the fourth chapter. And I want to read just the opening verse and of course the 21st verse. And it goes like this. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Then when we peruse to the 21st verse it says do thou diligence to come before winter. Ebubus greeteth thee and Putin and Linus and Claudia and all the brethren. I want to put a tag on just those particular two scriptures and just want to talk just for a few minutes. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. Come before winter. Come on and give God a hand for our hands and pray in Jesus in the presence of the Lord. Respect to God who is the head of our lives. I feel a preaching coming on y'all. Get back with us, yeah. And you all just have to wait. Uh, to God who is the head of our life. To Pastor Dennis Jerome Rogers. I must say we are indeed friends. Amen. And I thought
thank God for his friendship down through the years. I remember Bishop Anderson asked me a while back ago, how do you know how to go about doing the stuff that you do? I said, because of the late Superintendent Rochester Rogers. To Lady Dora. She's a class, y'all. Oh, Lord, help her here. We thank God for her. We thank God for my mother, yeah, yeah. Mother Leona Rogers. Yeah. Come on, you all. Yeah. If you want a cake, just call Mother Rogers. To Ella Thaddeus Bukri Rogers. To your assistant pastor, Ella White. To our minister of music, Minister Sherman. Come on, you all. Show him some love for you. To you, Ella Vanderbilt, I thank you for your love and your support, not only to him, but also to your superintendent. Come on, you all. I want to thank God for Pastor McFadden and, of course, Lady Loretta uh, for being here to show their love and their appreciation on today. For those of you that do not know my mother, she's here. Amen. A few years ago, uh, Elder William lost his wife, and uh, my mother lost her husband. And he comes to me and asks me, Pastor, can I take your mother out? And I began to look at how many years that he took care of Mother Williams. And I think it was 40 plus years. And I looked at how many years that my mother was married to my stepfather, and that was 40 years. And the unique thing about that relationship, she didn't even have to change her last name because it was already Williams. I want my mother to stand if you all don't know her. She's here, Ella Williams, my stepfather. Come on, this time to do the city life of Chi-Town. This is what I'm talking about. And she decided to come back home. And we thank God for my mother on today. All right. All right. Let me thank you, Brother Ms. Davis, to all of your Jackson. Awesome prayer. Awesome prayer. Amen. God bless you, Dr. Franklin. Amen. Brother Quick. Uh, let me go to work here. That's all right. Let me go to work here. Come before winter. There is just something in all of us that believes that there will be plenty of time. Plenty of time to make things right in our relationship. Plenty of time to bless our children. Plenty of time to say I love you to those we love the most. Plenty of time to make things right with the Lord. But now in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, we are reminded, however, that eventually time runs out. For you in Ecclesiastes 3, it tells us to everything that is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. And a time to plug up. But now Paul here closes this last epistle with a number of instructions regarding various individuals in his ministry, especially Timothy. Now it was a letter from the teacher to the student. It was a letter from the mature to the in mature. It was a letter from someone who has fought the fight to someone who just began to fight. It was a letter from someone who has finished his course to uh, someone that just began the course. It was 
was a letter from someone who has got the faith yes, sir. Yes, sir. to someone who just grabbed the hold of the first. Now, when we look at verses 1 through 5, here Paul pins it in such a way. He says right here that first of all, Tim, I'm going to give you the charge. He says here, I charge thee therefore before God, notice what he said here, and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall what judge the quick and the dead and his appearing and his kingdom. Then he goes on and said what? Preach the word. He was letting him know the importance of uh, the gospel. You, you got to understand. You got to understand that the gospel is uh, good news. He said, well, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, reprove the talk with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure. Are we living in that time now? Sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves it's in heaven, it's in ears. And they shall what? Turn away their ears from the truth. I want to let you know we're living in that day and time where folks just don't want to hear the truth. Yes, we're living in that day and time where people want to hear a fiber tale. Y'all ain't sitting here. They want somebody to eat their ears. They want somebody to take on their fashion. But I stop by here to let you know that we got to stand firm and what? Preach the truth. Uh, I'm sorry, the first day of Tim, I forgot to introduce y'all, so I'm going to give it y'all. My bad, my bad. Now, not only, not only in verse 1 uh, and 5, uh, also we peruse to verse 6, 7, and 8. He begins to give him his testimony. Can you see Paul right here to his son, Tim, letting him know some stuff that he wouldn't need to do? Now Paul, amen, in the sixth verse, begin to tell him, for I am now ready to be what offered my, uh -huh, and the time of my departure is at hand. But notice what he said here. He said, I fought a good you got to know that when you have done everything in your power to please the Lord. Wait, I know what's up, what's up, what's up. He said, he said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. It's fault that was laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which to the Lord, the righteous judge, shall kill me. That the head, not to me only, but to them, which is talking about us, you all, also, that loves what is appearing. That not, not only, not only, not only he gives him the charge, not only he gives his personal testimony about his life, but then as we peruse to the ninth verse, he said, now listen here, he said, do that diligent, to what diligent to come shortly unto me, why? For Demas has forsaken me. Not only he talked about giving him the charge, not only he gives him his life testimony, but he tells them how he was abandoned by a dear friend. One thing, one thing I must give Demas credit for is uh, he left the church and went into the world. Uh -huh, Y'all ain't sitting here. He didn't stay in the church. Why? Because he would love the world. He didn't stay singing in the choir because he would love the world. He didn't stay serving on the deacon board because he loved the world. He left the church. Why? Because he came to the realization I can't serve two masters. Uh -huh. I can't serve God and man too. He came to the realization for the Bible said, I'd rather that to be hot or cold for uh -huh. if you look warm. I'm gonna spew. I'm gonna spew. I'm gonna. I'm gonna spew. I'm gonna spew. Spew. Yeah. So he said, "Do that, didn't you come shortly unto me? For demons has forsaken me, having love this oppression world, and departed to this lack." Now, not only he gives him the charge, not only 
he gives his testimony. Not only he tells him about his abandonment, but then as we peruse, he gives him more instruction. He said, now, when you come here, uh, bring me my cloak that I left. And I was, bring me uh, my cloak, bring me my covering. And I was, what Paul was telling the Timothy, it get cold here in this Roman prison. And I was, I need my cloak. I, I need something to what? Cover me. And I want to submit to those of you who are not saved today. I want to let you know God will cover you. It don't make no difference how long you've been in sin. We serve a God that knows how to cover, cover us. So he said, bring, he said, bring my cloak. Uh, not only bring my cloak, but uh, I got it in notes here. He said, bring my books. Now, uh, why is it that he wanted his folks? Because you've got to understand that Paul was facing death. Paul was facing Nero's shopping block. So, although he was facing Nero's shopping block, but he still had his mind on ministry. Y'all, they said, man, I make me wonder, amen, if we was ready, getting ready to die for Christ, when we still have our mind on ministry. So he said, he said, he said, now bring my cloak, bring my books, because my books is some stuff that I jotted down. I know I'm, I know, I know I'm preaching Dr. Robinson. Uh, there's some stuff, there's some notes, there's some sermon notes I want to read over there. Y'all ain't sitting here. That there's, there's some songs I, I kind of want to look over. Y'all ain't sitting here. Uh, I, 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 there, there's something about my books that I need. Now hold me. He said, not only cut coins here. He said, not only bring my cloak, not only bring my books, but then he says, bring my parchment. Okay, let me get well, okay. Well, let me tell you what parchment is. The parchment is the old testament patriarchs writing. <laughs> now, uh, why did he want them? I really don't know. But maybe while he was sitting there waiting on death row. Maybe he wanted to read about Daniel in y'all place in the lion's seat. Maybe he wanted to read about Shadrach, Meshach, and the Peter Goat. Maybe he wanted to read about Moses and the scriptures of Israel. Maybe he wanted to read about Joshua marching around the walls of Jericho. Maybe he wanted to read about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Y'all place in him. He said, "Now, uh, bring, bring, bring my, bring my cloak, bring, bring, bring my, my books, bring my parchments." Now, then he goes on a little bit further. Now, he said, "Now, uh, the twenty-first verse. I'm, I'm getting ready to close, Doctor Robinson." He said, "Now, do uh, thou diligence to come uh, before winter." Uh, uh, I, I got something out of that, you all. He said, do your very best to come before it get cold. Uh, well, let me just break down what winter means. Uh, uh, you got to understand that in the winter seasons, uh, everything dies. Uh, the trees dies. The, uh, the flowers dies. The, the grass dies. Y'all listen in here. Everything dies. In the winter time, uh, uh -huh. so he said, uh, uh, "You need to get here before everything dies." In other words, you need to get here before I die. Y'all be sitting here today. Uh, uh, you got to understand here. Uh, he said, "Come before winter." Uh, when we look at the statistics, and I think I shared this with Pastor Rogers on the phone one night when we was talking, I was letting him know, for those of you that don't know, that 69% of death take place in the winter time. Y'all ain't said it here. If you didn't know it, you know it now. Uh, uh, I don't know why, but 
It's something about the winter time that kills off folks. Uh -huh. It kills off the ants. It kills off the flies. It, it kills off uh -huh. 69% of humans. It's something about the winter time. So he said, come. Come before winter because uh, I need to see you. And I was saying, I, I, I need to see are you still dressing? Like I told you, y'all didn't sit here. I'm just using my, my sanctified imagination. I, I, I want to see it, Tim, because I want to see, make sure you, you're staying groomed. You know how I took to the rod you do it. Uh, let, let, let me see how you look when you go into the, the pulpit. You, you can't go into the pulpit looking at y'all ain't sitting here. You can't go into the pulpit looking at cattle with y'all. You, you got to know how to sit in the, the pulpit. Y'all ain't sitting here. Uh, he, he, he wanted to see Tim there because of the fact that he knew what he he had it still in him. So he said to him here, he said to him here, he said, I need you to come, but I need you to come uh, before winter. And I want to submit to those of you today, uh, Tim, he didn't make it. In other words, what I'm trying to say uh, to those of you today, why pull off what you can do today uh, for tomorrow? Uh, you got to understand, sex of God is getting late in the in the evening, and the sun is about to go down. And I want to submit to those of you who cannot say today, yeah, it's almost winter. If you had not got your business fixed with the Lord, it is almost winter. If you have not gave your life totally over to Him, I want to submit to you that it's almost winter. If you, if you, if you have not received uh -huh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's almost winter. If you have not learned how to love your enemies, I want to submit to you it's almost winter. If you're not doing the thing that God has called for you to do, I want to submit to you it's almost winter. I stop by here to tell you, great new Bible way. Oh, it's super Sunday celebration that Jesus is soon to come. I don't know about you, but I made up in my mind. I want to go back with him when he come, when he cracked the sky. I want to hear him say, come my people. Y'all ain't sitting here. I stop by here to tell somebody, get your time in. It's coming out the wild. Get your time in. Winter is almost around the corner. Y'all ain't sitting here. I want to submit to that person that may not know him and the part of your sin. It's time to get to know him. I stop by here to tell you that Jesus is soon to come. Y'all ain't sitting here. Y'all know who we sing all the time. It's getting late. And the sun is refusing to shine. But I want to let you know I know 
funeral out. They're going to heaven. They done check. Y'all ain't sitting here. They live alternative lifestyles. Uh, they have done everything outside of the will of God. But still, we say, they going to heaven. If I knew that if I have three and four sweethearts on the side, y'all be sitting here. If I knew heaven is guaranteed for me and I don't have to do nothing to get it, uh, I wouldn't be here playing church. Because if everybody dying that's going to heaven, we wouldn't need no church. If everybody's dying that going to heaven, we wouldn't need Jesus to come and die for our sins. And I want to submit to you, everybody that's dying ain't going to heaven. And for these preachers that never put folks in heaven, I don't put folks nowhere. All I say is in the hands of a just God. Because you are the only one to put your head, yourself in heaven or hell. Come on, let's welcome all of our viewing audience. Amen. Come on, thank God for them great in by the way. Amen. Uh, worshiping with us. Amen. In their homes or wherever they are today. Thank you so much for being with the Greater New Bible Way family. Whether you are a member or you are visiting with us by social media, we praise God for you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. The man of God that is getting ready to come, amen, to this podium. He is our own. Amen. He and his wife, amen, they come to us. Amen. Amen. Just a little over a couple of years ago now, I believe. Amen. Right around three years ago, amen, amen. But if you did not know, you would think that they've been here ever since the beginning of time. And right. you can tell when people are anointed, when people are saved, when people are holy, those feel, amen. They fit right on in, amen, like a hand in a glove, amen. And we thank God for this man of God. Amen. As well as his wife being, amen, a part of this church family. Amen. Amen. Elder Vanderbilt, amen, is a great gospel preacher. He knows the word of God. He loves God with all of his heart, soul, and mind. No matter what, amen, he's determined to run on, amen, and see what the end is going to be. Listen, I'm not trying to sell him to you. Amen. But I want you to get ready to receive, amen, this profound gospel preacher. Amen. As he get ready to come, amen. Amen. Don't leave. Amen. Don't go to the restroom. Don't turn, amen, the channel. Amen. I guarantee you, you're going to get something out of the word today. Amen. And God is going to encourage you. Amen. Father God, we thank you now. We praise you. We give you the glory. Thank you, O oh God. We thank you for being God in our lives, O oh God. Father, we come before you now, God. We ask that you would touch, heal us, deliver, and set us free. God, we ask that you would use us for your glory. Oh God, we thank you for what you've already done for us. God, take it away from us. Those things that hinders us, oh God, from following you, oh God. God, we ask that you would anoint us now from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Let your will be done today. Let your kingdom come. God, we ask that you would encourage your people today, oh God. Move by your spirit in this place, God. Have your way, and God will praise and magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God the glory. We exalt his name for who he is. Amen. First of all, we give honor to our pastor. Amen. Pastor Rogers. Amen. And to our first lady, Lady Rogers. Amen. We give God glory because he's good. Amen. And to all of the, amen, the leaders in this church. Amen. I have to say it like this so I won't miss anybody. Amen. Amen. Yes, you ushers. Amen. You are amen leaders. Amen. And we thank God for you. Amen. Amen. And I truly, amen, thank God. Amen for the, amen, for the cream in my coffee. Amen. 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 I tell my wife I like my coffee brown, just like you. 
Amen. Amen. I thank God for my wife. Amen. She is staying. Amen. My friend. Amen. Amen. I thank God for her. Amen. A great intercessor. Amen. I give God the glory. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you all preachers. Amen. But I have my wife lay hands on me all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because I thank God. Amen. Amen. For my friend. Amen. Amen. We give God glory today. Amen. I come to encourage you today. Amen. I just want you, amen, just turn your Bibles, amen, amen, to a familiar passage of Scripture, amen, Isaiah 59, amen, I want to just encourage you, amen, in two verses there, amen, and then we allow the Holy Ghost, amen, to have his way. Is that all right? Amen. We allow the Holy Spirit to have his way, amen, and we give God glory because he's God and there is none like him. Amen. Uh, our pastor said it earlier. Amen. I'm a gospel preacher. Amen. I preach the word. Amen. I didn't come to entertain you. Right. Amen. Amen. It was the word that saved me. Right, it was the word of God that delivered me. Right. Amen. I used to be, amen, over 40 something years ago. I used to be a church person. Right. Amen. But I met Jesus one day. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And, and it was my sister. Amen. She's gone on to be with the Lord. Amen. She never called me by my name. She always said, brother. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. You know the Lord loves you, brother. I said, I know the Lord loves me. He said, you, God just wants you to be saved. I said, girl, I'm saved already. <laughs> amen. I didn't know, amen, that I had to have a personal relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Because, amen, I only repeated what I heard the preacher say. See, amen. I didn't search the scriptures for myself. Amen. And, and I didn't know, amen, that I was living in sin, but I was a faithful church member. Did y'all hear that? I was still going to the club on Saturday night. I played a tenor saxophone. My sister and I, amen, was in a band, and we were church preacher's children. We used to, my sister and I, we used to crawl out the window, wake the mom and dad and went in their room. We used to crawl out the window because we had a gig that we had to be there at 8.30. And my sister and I, amen, we were, amen, were good church folks. Amen. But I found out that I had to meet Jesus. I had to know Jesus. Amen. And it's sin, y'all, amen, that separates us from God. Did y'all hear that? It's sin that separates us from God. I don't care how great a church member you are. Amen. Only the pure in heart is going to see God. Amen. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So if you're a Baptist, you got to be a holy Baptist. If you're a Methodist, you got to be a holy Methodist. Hallelujah. Come on now. Amen. Amen. If you are a church of God in Christ, you got to be holy. Amen. Because you know we used to sing the song. Amen. You can't join this church. You got to be born in it. Amen. But you got to be holy. I don't care what church you're in. Amen. My mother, amen, was born Baptist and died Baptist. But she was a Holy Ghost still Baptist woman. Do y'all hear me? So don't y'all stop mocking Baptist people because God got some Holy Ghost feel Baptist preachers. God called me from the church of God in Christ to go and help my father who is a Baptist preacher. Amen. And I preached holiness there. Amen. See, holiness, amen, with you, you men, if you don't have hope, you can't, you can't, you can't make it. Hallelujah. Amen. And I just thank God for the word of God this morning. Amen. Amen. And hallelujah. Amen. God, amen, is good, y'all. And he's good when? All the time. I know that's right. Amen. Amen. Because one day I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Yes, hallelujah. But guess what? The master. Come on. Heard. And from my sin. And now I'm saved. Sanctified. Filled with God. Press the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. And thank God. Thank God for 
the word of God. Amen. I just got two verses, amen, of scripture from, amen, Isaiah 59. Hallelujah to encourage you this morning. Amen. Very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. In Isaiah 59, verse 19. Verse 19 and 20. Amen. Amen. It said, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. And his glory, hallelujah, glory to God, from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, did y'all hear me? The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. Verse 20 said, and the redeemer shall come to Zion. Glory to God. And unto them what? That turn from transgressions. Listen to that. In Jacob said the Lord of hosts. Amen. And we know the word of God is already blessed. Amen. Amen. I just thank God for the word of God. I love the word of God. Amen. You know, I testify to you all the time. Amen. That when I'm not feeling good. Amen. All I have to do is just pick up the word. The word looks like it energizes me. I mean, the word of God. God said he sent his word to heal us and deliver us from all of our destruction. Amen. In this passage of scripture, amen, amen, the people of God, amen, had turned away from God. Hallelujah. Amen. And they were, they were indulging in all sorts of things. Amen. Things were going on. It looked like, amen, that, 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 that the people of God just forgot about God. Amen. And I believe we're living in a time like that today. Amen. God has been sending his word. Now, way before the pandemic started, God was sending his word, saying, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and Turn from their wicked ways. Then what I hear from him. I will forgive their sins. And heal the land. And so God is, a, is such a gracious God. God said in the 15th verse. Amen. My eyes and my ears. Are open to the prayer. That is prayed. In this place. Amen. In our text today. Amen. The people of God. Have turned from God. And Mother Daniel, amen, God was so offended because he couldn't find any intercessors. No one were praying and calling on God, deliver us. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, turn us from this sin. Hallelujah, but they got comfortable in their sin. And they got, how many, oh shit, people today are taking God for granted. People right in the church are taking God for granted. They're living in sin. And don't you know that the eyes of the Lord is in every place? Beholding the good and the evil. Hallelujah. God see your sin. Amen. And thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. Amen. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is so faithful. Hallelujah. Because his mercy, what, is new. Every morning. I'm so glad that God didn't kill me in my sin. I'm a Holy Ghost preacher. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm so glad that we didn't get caught in our sin. We got people in the body of Christ that's doing all sorts of things. But God is a merciful God. He's calling for us to come out from among them and be ye separate. Amen. I tell people all the time, amen, you are not better than a sinner. You just different than a sinner. Because you are Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, blood bought, hallelujah, by the blood of the Lamb. You have, you have repented. God said if you repent and be converted, your sins will be brought out. Don't you know, amen, that you can turn from your sin if you turn back to God. The people of Israel, even in Isaiah time, Isaiah 
said, we have seen. Did y'all hear that? The great prophet said that. We have seen. Hallelujah. And if we would come down of our high heart preachers and let people know, amen, hallelujah, that we are no better than the person sitting in the pew. That we fighting some devils too. The devil is on our trail. We got some weaknesses. Come on now. Hallelujah. Amen. But we strive in every day to live according to God's word. Amen. I want to just encourage you with a subject today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. When it looks like the enemy is winning. You got to put emphasis on that. When it looks like. When it looks like. The enemy is winning. When the enemy comes in like a flood. Hallelujah. You can rest assured. That hallelujah. That it is not because you have done something wrong. But because you have done something right. Did y'all hear that? Hey now. So let me encourage you right now. In the word of God. Let me encourage you in your spiritual walk today. In God. Amen. That when it looks like. The enemy is weak. God said, I lift up a standard against it. Glory be to God. Amen. We thank God for the word of God. Thank God for his word. Amen. 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 Now in this, hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. In this verse, hallelujah, we can see, hallelujah, when the people of God start doing the right thing, listen, serving God wholeheartedly, worshiping God, Walking by faith and living holy lives. Listen, fasting and praying and reverencing God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Then and when, hallelujah, the presence of God or the promise of God, hallelujah, will manifest themselves in our lives. Glory to God. No matter what the enemy is trying to do. All things work together for good to them that love God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. The enemy does not, listen y'all, does not need, hallelujah, to come in like a flood. Hallelujah. When you are doing what he wants you to do. Did y'all hear that? Amen. They are already accomplishing the enemy's purpose. Glory to God. It is only when the people of God are becoming dangerous to the enemy of our soul that he needs to try to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Amen. I want to just encourage you, amen, in four little points today. Number one, amen, what you need to understand, hallelujah, that your spiritual nature, hallelujah, is under attack. Yes, sir. The spiritual nature, of, of us, that means the devil that's coming to us is under attack. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, First and foremost, y'all listen to this. Amen. You need to understand that when you come and the devil come in like a flood, when he comes in to attack you, that it is a spiritual, that it is spiritual in source and nature. Many times, hallelujah, we are tempted to look at the circumstances or the people, listen y'all, and view them as the enemy. Glory to God. They may be, hallelujah, a tool of being used by the enemy. Listen y'all, hallelujah. They may be a tool or they may be used by the enemy. Amen. But the enemy, hallelujah, is their spiritual, is working spiritually in their bodies. Listen at this. I said they're working spiritually in their bodies. Amen. In other words, it's a spiritual attack that the devil is using them. Your enemy, listen y'all, is not people. Come on now. Amen. Even, even, amen, when you have a lot of finances, listen, or any kind of obstacle of any kind, the cause is a spiritual agenda 
that wants to stop you from doing the things that God has called you to do. Hallelujah. When you obey God, hallelujah, you are tearing down, hallelujah, the kingdom of darkness. Did y'all hear me? When you obey God, you tear it down the spirit of darkness. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, amen, that amen, that sometimes, amen, the devil will come in, amen, and cause you to become so angry. Amen. Cause you, amen, to want to, amen, to or to, to get in your flesh. To do what you think you ought to do. Then sometimes some folks that make you so mad that you can grab them in a cop. Come on now. Amen. Amen. And sometimes they can make you really mad that you want to grab your 38. Come on. Sometimes you might want to grab two 38s. Amen. Because people that got you so mad. But I'm here to tell you, amen, instead of grabbing at your 238, grab Acts 2. 38. Did y'all get me? Grab Acts 2 and 38. Acts 2, 2 and 38 said, Then Peter said unto them, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And guess what will happen after that? Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Amen. But but when it looked like the enemy is winning. Amen. God said he'll lift up a standard against him. You got to remember that you are saved and sanctified. And we don't handle our problems of our circumstances like the world does. Amen. We got to get on our knees and pray. Come on now. You got to call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You got to ask God to strengthen you in that situation. Because somebody on the sideline is watching you how you handle your situation. Hallelujah. You are praying and, and then you are witness to people the, the goodness of God, what God will do in certain circumstances. But when a hot situation come up for you, you get in your flesh. Didn't the Bible tell us in Romans 8, hallelujah, if we walk in the flesh, we will fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if you walk in the spirit, you will fulfill the lust of the, hallelujah, the spirit. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for the word of God. A church where love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. 